Hello, this is the Digital Loop uh, season four, episode 12. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Paul. How are you? Great to be back. It's been a while. Both of us, we've been traveling all over the place, but we are very happy to be back here at the Digital Loop. Uh, and today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, interesting at least for me. For some time, I, I, I focus on this specific niche in the market, the world of advertising. And uh, we found a very interesting article by Alexander Bruel, which was published in Ad Age, uh, entitled The Ad Agency of the Future is Coming. Are you ready? And uh, reading that article, it got me thinking a lot about, you know, my experience in the advertising industry and looking at where they were and where they should be going. And I think this article really, really nails it from the point of view of what agencies need to do in order to stay relevant. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I don't know, Paul, you are, I know that advertising industry is not your, your, your forte, uh, but I wanted to ask you if, you know, you have any opinions on, on, on this topic. No, actually, so I'm not an advertiser myself, but I've been actually working with a lot of advertising agencies uh, during my consulting projects. So I have this kind of outside of view. It's it's not a new debate because it's been almost like, I mean, ten years at least, where advertising agencies are saying, uh, "Should we like change our model?" You know, you had the. The Razorfish and some other companies that very quickly went into technology, for instance, understanding that it was not only about, you know, basically say, selling inventory and ad space anymore. It was about transforming. Uh, some some uh, ad agencies became more consultants as well. And, you know, the more it goes, the more of these questions keep coming back. And there was actually a very interesting uh, uh conference here in London, the Guardian Media Summit. It happened a few months ago, probably February uh, 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a lot of the big ad agencies were represented. Of course, we're in London, in Europe, that's where all they are. You had the CEO of WPP saying that uh, we're not in the advertising business anymore. Haha! <laughs> -ha. So they're an ad agency that is not an ad agency anymore. Uh, I think it was Publicis, uh, another very big ad agency. I think it was also the CEO, uh, uh, correct people correct me if I'm wrong, that said, oh, we're now in the business of connecting people. Uh, so, uh, of course, that's not Nokia, but <laughs> the, the, there is a shift that has been going on. Why? Because probably, you know, first of all, most of advertising now online has been going to Google and now Facebook. Actually, the share of advertising on online digital advertising by Google has been dwindling a little bit in the past year or two. It's still massive, right? When I say dwindling, don't don't think it's actually going down to a, a dramatic way. On the other end, Facebook is actually increasing its ad power, obviously, because it controls the entire environment. And but the question is, if I were an advertiser right now, uh, besides the traditional channels of advertising that are, you know, the non-digital, also print and billboards and et cetera, is if I think about Facebook, the example I just said, lad, I would be like, why wouldn't Facebook just put the switch and create its own ad agency, for instance, right? They could, I mean, would they know that not, oh, not always to do their you know, they, they have these core businesses. And when you talk to advertisers, they will say, yeah, but advertising, they will not do it because that's one of the, not one of their core businesses. And I'm like, well, yeah, duh. Advertising is one of their core businesses because that's one of their core revenues. So I'm not saying that they will do it, but of course that creates this kind of angst and anxiety in, in, uh, in the advertising businesses because they've clearly seen their uh, business changing. And I will add one more thing is obviously, and I'm talking about, you know, the, uh, Digital advertising, I would, I think, banner is dead, but actually, I think it was always dead, actually, because when you look at the actual people who see those, we've seen these stories of fraud, we've seen these stories of uh, who is actually looking at these ad, uh, as these ads, and the numbers are not uh, sketchy to be, to, to say the least. So they have this kind of. Have we been in a bubble where we were selling idiotic stuff for the past five years? And now, how do we reshape ourselves to become the ad agency of the future? So what is the ad agency of the future, Ivan? I just want to say that the correct answer to that question is yes. <laughs> um, I, I think that, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, everything, what's happening now is, is I think that companies and, 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 and big companies, they are looking for a partner that is helps them deal with complexity. Um, the complexity that it's happening right now in the advertising and in the marketing world is, is crazy. In, in this article, uh, the president of Pepsi, uh, Brad Jakeman, he says uh, that Pepsi used to produce four pieces of content per year, mainly on TV. 
uh, and they will take about eight months to develop and they will spend a million dollars per film. Today, four pieces of content to 4,000 from eight months to eight days or sometimes eight hours and actually the budgets have not uh, have not changed. So basically, you know, the complexity and all the things that you need to take into consideration to have an effective connection with your consumers, with your with your fans, with your users, uh, it's just it's just crazy. And the problem is that still many agencies are still uh, not moving forward and not really adapting to the new reality and the new changes. Um, the fact that there is the, the agencies need to to step it up. They need to start you know, making all this complexity invisible. They need to be able to bring in, you know, technology. They need to be able to bring in design. They need to be able to understand data and provide, you know, valuable to this data with the, with the, all the media, with the creative, with all the different strategies that need to be able um, to, to, to accomplish the, the, the objectives of the client. Um, I think that's another thing that we are seeing today that agencies, in fact, they need to become more, um, be able to, be, to, to track performance. And here, I, 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 I have a quote here uh, that Mark Reed, the CEO of Onderman, says that agencies should be built around clients and consumers and not around brands and channels like TV and digital, and that they need to become more accountable for results. In, and this means sales. So far, you know, many advertising agencies have been focusing on the creative part, on just making nice, you know, branding and, and awareness campaigns. And in reality, they are not able to really measure the effectiveness when it comes down to the bottom line and to results. So all these changes are forcing agencies to adapt. And uh, some of the points that are mentioned here, which I think is interesting to mention, is that the fact that right now, uh, you know, for example, the account teams, they need to become now uh, formed by what what's called multi-specialists, people that understand design, understand technology, understand creative, and they're able to be the bridge between the client and all these different departments so they can get all the messages passed across in an effective manner. Uh, the rise of the marketing technologist. Uh, the technologies is a crucial part of a teams now. You know, you need to put together a technologist, a distribution expert, a storyteller. It's no longer just about, you know, the copywriter and the art director, but now it's much, much more complex. You need to bring technology to the table. And, you know, at the end of the day, as you mentioned, there are new players happening in the tech industry, companies like Google, like Facebook, and also, Interestingly, because you know we've been in talks, uh, I've been in talks with some of these companies connected with doing some consulting work for them. Uh, the big consulting companies are starting to be very, very involved in this sector. Uh, Accenture, Accenture Interactive, IBM has in, uh, also an agency, Deloitte Digital, PwC Digital. These are huge companies with huge clients that they are starting to be really, really active and actually very, very successful because they are able to bring all these different you know, resources that they have based on the huge size of the company into the specific needs of the clients. So interesting, interesting times. I, Agencies need to change and need to adapt. I, I would challenge you on the last one about consulting companies being always very successful. I think it's I think it's a scramble from all sides. I mean, you know, because of the power of a Google and a Facebook there, and because we and that's what we've been saying here, and that's what many other people have been saying is that, you know, you're marketing encompasses much more than simply the last bit of basically selling the products to the consumer and putting a message to the consumer it starts at a very early point you have all the companies whether it's consulting whether it's advertising whether even technologies are trying not to cover all bases directly themselves because they understand that companies want to have a full view of why you know the you have to think about how you're going to sell the product to Ivan Hernandez when you actually are building or planning the product, not only when you actually have the product and, and suddenly starts to think, oh, how am, am I going to segment my market and sell that to millennials and blah, 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 and all the stuff like that. So I think all the companies are moving into that, that direction. So uh, you, you mentioned the... Um, you mentioned the consulting, so uh, advertising agencies are also doing that. I mean, you have uh, WPP Sapient Inside, you have DDB Flex, you have ha Havas has done a lab. I think it's here in London and LA and other places, Havas 18, I think it's called. So they're all trying to move because it's not only the advertisers. I think the advertisers are hit first. 
because of the amount of advertising that exists, the, the prices that are go down, the, the sudden realization that probably banners was not the good idea that CPC is actually lowering so that there's not that much money to be made and also that basically for me social media has become like television so how do you actually really now cater to that how do you create uh, like you said how do you understand the data that is being fed back to you to actually understand what Ivan Hernandez is doing on Facebook what he's actually looking what is the appropriate ad uh, uh, display to put him to, to, to him I think this is a, a big play and you also have the same thing happens on the media side you have you know the, the New York Times as what is T media I forgot the name now you have publications like quartz uh, you have a uh, BuzzFeed obviously it's very well known that actually are creating a lot of content which is now sponsor content native content whatever you want to call it it's also moving into the same place of advertising uh, agencies so everybody is kind of vying for the same bit of, of of attention but still for me to me the big players here are still the Googles and the Facebooks and a few others probably Twitter is still of course valid although it's not as powerful as it might use it might have been or we chat in China etc so I think there's a scramble by in all sides to say and they all have one thing in common they need technologists they need to understand technology they need to understand the data and how what we do you do with the data and then how you transform that data in something relevant useful probably funny as well sometimes or for someone like Ivan or someone from like Paul I think they're all trying that and it's a big uh, I think mental shift for them and I will also last but not least mention that even the traditional companies are moving there when you look at GE General Electric who now call themselves an innovation company they're producing more content per year than Time magazine so they are also having this huge leverage or not only aware to put the ads but simply to talk people call that content marketing but to talk to their users another yet another way to reach our users also using the same technologies via Facebook Google etc so I think everybody is actually overlapping in each other business here and that they're all trying to understand what is going to be the, 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 the next one. And if you, if you ever do advertising on Google, you'll see that Google themselves, they have a lot of ad people that will sell you, of course, the inventory, but you also have, uh, for big accounts, you also have consulting. They also help you. Facebook already does the same thing. If you are a big account, uh, if you are, I don't know, a Red Bull or whatever, they will come to help you. They will tell you, okay, you know, we'll, we will help you doing what you reach the kind of audience you want. Uh, there's been, and there's been success stories on that when it's it's complicated to understand probably it's not just you and me going and boosting our posts on Facebook and trying to do some market segmentation you can actually with the interest and stuff you can create uh, uh, probably very good campaigns but at the end of the day again it's about bringing technology in to uh, an old type of thinking and I think this is the biggest shift it, it needs transformation and I believe not all the agencies will survive this a lot of agencies might die like maybe also a lot of consulting companies might actually die in that process not all of them will be ready because they've had a very different business model before to to to, to see that so i hope that the clients will work you you're working on consulting i do work with some of them as well so help them understand that this is shifting and they need not only people like Paul and Ivan probably but they also need like actual computer engineers actual data scientists as we call them today to survive yeah, absolutely. I mean, and this is something that I've been talking about for the last five or six years. I remember talking uh, back in 2010 uh, about the fact that, you know, it is no longer viable to have, you know, the, the digital uh, team, the digital department as, you know, five, six guys in the corner while, you know, 98% of your agency continue to work like if it's 1987. And this is the problem that a lot of agencies have been continued to do until today. Uh, we see more and more the, the, the shift that you know now bringing you know programmers and developers in house is something that more agencies are doing it. Yet still, a lot of agencies have most of the people continue to work in silos. So you have the creative team, you have the strategy team, you have the account team, and the internet guys there somewhere there in the corner playing football. And <laughs> What what we need what they need to understand is that it can no longer be like that. Everybody at the agency needs to understand digital. Everybody needs to understand design. Everybody needs to understand, you know, branding personas and buyers' journeys and 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 strategy and everything 
there is no longer the fact that that you know this is not my job I'm, I'm just the account or I'm just the client service so I'm just meeting with the client no everybody in the agency needs to understand what's going on they need to bring again what's mentioned here I, I like this term the rise of the marketing technologist you know somebody that understands technology but has a clear understanding also of the being the, the impact of this technology in the business and as a result what happened is hopefully someday they're going to move from being perceived as a supplier of videos or a supplier of banners or a supplier of posters into a business partner, somebody that actually is an expert in the field that helps clients deal with all, the, all this complexity and helps them accomplish their objectives. The day that most agencies start to operate this way is the day that the agency of the future will be here. Until then, I guess we're going to see there are a lot of agencies doing great stuff. And I know a lot of the agencies, especially here in Poland, are already going in that direction. And these are the agencies that are killing it. Uh, the question is, are the other agencies going to be able to keep up? Or are they just going to sit down and wait? Uh, or are they, you know, as I mentioned before, the, the big consulting companies are going to start taking a bigger piece of the, of the pie because, uh, you know, they have the size and they have the power. But, uh, but I think there's also probably, uh, uh, and I, I kind of mentioned that, you know, with, with the ads that seems to be frustrating, sometimes, of course, I said unseen, fraudulent, or effective. There's also probably a diminishing uh, pie to a certain extent. Uh, to a certain extent, of course, I'm not saying that advertising is disappearing, but you had the, the head of Facebook advertising technology that said, you know, they wanted to launch Atlas, which was their product to basically say, we're not only going to sell Facebook advertising on Facebook, we're going to get, sell inventory that is outside of Facebook when we're reaching the limit of our inventory. So it could be inventory coming from all over the web. So that was a big competitor to Google itself. They just cut down the inventory by, I think, 60 to 7 percent because, and that's, again, the Facebook, uh, the head of uh, Facebook advertising technology said he was amazed by the volume of valueless inventory. He said there's a lot of inventory that has absolutely no value, and it didn't feel right for them to sell that, val that, that inventory to anyone. So they cut it down. And I think this is also the realization. The pie, in that sense, is becoming smaller than we are, than actually believe. So there, there is not only you have to go into technology as an advertiser or and or as a consultant, by the way, as consultancy companies have to do that. But also because you know the, the way to sell is actually changing. Advertising is not what we thought it would be. Advertising is always a kind of I'm sorry to say that sometimes it's the easy way you, you hear startups and I'm sure you have the same thing in van that come to you and say, how are you going to monetize? Oh we're going to sell advertising. As if advertising is what will solve all the problems is the only monetization that we think about. And if you come back to the episode that you and me made about, I think, what, two or three episodes ago about the, you know, the invisible apps, the conversational UIs, when it's about texting and voice, the advertising, you know, especially with voice, where is advertising? You know, you'll have Alexa or Siri starting telling to you, oh, you should buy this. Probably, maybe, I don't know how it will play, but even you know, if there's no screen, there's no display advertising. There's no, you know, suddenly a nice advert uh, ad that runs for 30 seconds. Not, of course, that screens are disappearing, but there are other ways also to talk and interact with technology. Other user experiences are being created. So I, I, I think there's, it's not only about shifting and understanding technology, understanding data, uh, and going in that direction for both advertiser and consultancy companies, but also that the way to do, the way to talk to consumers has to change it has i think it was uh i don't remember now his name i think it, it uh, there was an article on digiday where he had the uh one of the head of a big advertising company and he said that anonymously he said we've tried to sex up something that was fundamentally broken so the, the, he admits that basically what they were doing was almost useless and i think this is the realization we have to come advertisers have to understand is that it's not only it's going about technology, but it's understanding how you know the customer experience, how to understand how to talk to Ivan, what Ivan actually wants, what you need to surface to Ivan. And this is beyond advertising. It's advertising plus whatever you want to call it. And I think uh, companies, advertising agencies, that will understand that and actually execute on that, will exactly. be the ones that will that will survive. 
Absolutely. And this is, again, something that I'm, I I always joke that I was the worst person to work in advertising while I was working with advertising agencies as my clients, because I was the first person to say that it's not advertising for advertising's sake. It should be all about adding value. And you, in a position of being the agency, you have a lot of opportunities to bring a lot of value because you understand the technology, because you understand consumer behavior, because you understand consumer needs. Yet, most agencies chose to continue making 30 seconds post because that's what the client asked for or that's where the money is or that's where the margins are so I, I guess you know I guess we need to start wrapping it up I totally agree with you I think that this is an imperative mo mo uh, moment for for most agencies they need to understand again they need to bring value they need to understand that technology it's not just you know a part of 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 actually it's 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 a crucial element of the entire strategy and they need to you know start developing uh, what they need to do to develop the position as experts, not and, and as partners, not just as a supplier of videos and banners and stuff like this. Um, and I th think that uh, this is this is the direction where we, we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, as you mentioned, this is not something new, uh, but it's interesting to see, as you mentioned, that other sectors are starting to be involved, not in the advertising industry per se, but in actually, you know, building creativity and innovation and technology in order to have a better connection with customers, which at the end of the day, that's what is, I guess, the objective. Agreed. And on that, uh, I'll see you in the next episode, Ivan. Yeah, looking forward to the next episode. Uh, once again, for all of you guys, sorry that we've been a bit disconnected. Uh, we've been all over the place, uh, Bulgaria, Macedonia, Poland, and, and actually this is, we are just at the beginning. We're going to be traveling again a lot. So if you see us at some event, somewhere in the world come and say hi don't be shy and uh, we'll try to get back here and record a show as soon as possible uh, but in the meantime you know uh, you know connect with us on facebook on linkedin on twitter uh, and uh, if you have any questions uh, just just uh, contact us and we'll be very very glad to interact with you okay exactly. all that see you next time bye bye Ivan. see you next time <laughs>